Hi, everybody. Hello. Fancy, but that's the best I could do. <laughs> I'm still figuring out this digital stuff with recording and splicing right. images together. And thank God for Canva. <laughs> I would never make it. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for uh, watching the show. Most of you are going to see this on the premiere, I hope, a little later or tomorrow, whenever you get a chance to watch it. And may I introduce to you Arthur from EaseYourMind.com, um, wonderful gentleman that I have had just the most fun with. Um, I saw him with Linda G and with uh, Mel, the Aloha Shirt Psychic. And once I saw him with both of them and then watched his first show that he did, I was hooked. I was like, okay, I got to give this guy a buzz <laughs> and get him over here. So I'll pay you $50 later when we get off. There we go. <laughs> so Arthur, take it away. Where do you start with all of this? Have you always had abilities? Did they start at a certain time or after a certain incident? Or well, the, the story I usually say is, you yes. know, as kids, we're all psychic. As kids, we see everything, but we're yeah. taught not to use it. Yeah. And I remember as a little kid, like in kindergarten, just walking up to people in the in the stores, like a department store. My father just picked me up and ran me across the other side of the store because I just start talking. Yeah. And so then you learn to <laughs> shut up. And then we had moved to Indianapolis, and I was in in the first grade. And then it was Catholic school. And there we were in second grade when everyone was wearing the Whipple and gowns, like Mel calls them the penguins. And I walked up to one of the nuns. And in those days, and I think it still is, you can't just walk up to the nun's desk. That's like walking up to a judge in the middle of a court. You, know, you don't do that. Oh, so yeah. so she walked, I walked up and she's like staring at me. And said, what do you want? I'm like, you don't have to cry. You don't need to cry. Sister Marie Jean is going to be fine. No need to cry. And she just stared looking at me and said, basically like, Damien, go sit down. <laughs> so, so the minute I sat down, the mother superior came over the loudspeaker saying, may we all have a silent moment of prayer for Sister Marie Jean. She was taken to hospital. And that was that. <laughs> And then I go on to tell the story where a day later or two, we're going, we're in church, all in single file. In those days, they had a clicker. So when they clicked it, we all genuflected at the same time and, you know, that kind of stuff. So the clicker's going off. And we were well trained puppies back then. <laughs> yes, yes. At least it wasn't like electrodes and, and you know, zapping us. Pablo but, dogs. <laughs> yeah. But so the numbers, Licking holy water on me. And as I tell everybody, I wasn't sizzling. But then, you know, through the, but then they would ask me things and I would tell them things and they didn't like knowing that I could tell them things, but they asked anyway. So it's like, whatever. Well, if you don't want to know the answer, why do you ask the question? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. But a lot of it was over my head. I didn't know what I was saying. But, you know, it's like, Sometimes even when I do readings for people nowadays, I'm, I'm saying stuff like, I, this doesn't make any sense to me, but it makes sense yeah. to them. You know, because exactly. it's, it's not me giving them. It's not coming Most from Most of the time, I have no clue what I said, and I have no memory of what I said. Well, that's what why I you mean, tell the police. You know, it's... <laughs> yeah, they don't believe me. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, anyway. But I literally have to go back and rewatch the show. How did you, and how did you start all the women in our family have the gift as it's put um when i was like three or four i would talk to this male voice that would talk to me mm -hmm. think darth vader that's the kind of voice a deep male bass voice and he would just talk to me and i would talk back and people would walk in the room and say who are you talking to and i'd be god they'd say oh okay and that was it. There was never, don't do that, or that's evil, or oh, that's, you know, it, it was just like, oh, okay, she's crazy. 
Um, and then when I was nine, we left Texas and went to Florida to visit friends. And we arrived in the middle of the night. And when we walked into the house, the first thing I said when I walked over the threshold was, oh, I've been here before. And everybody's like, no, you haven't. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been here before. There's this room is here and this room is here. And this is so-and-so's bedroom. And that's the color in there. And they have the, the bunk beds are in the back bedroom. I just sat there and just described the whole house, you know, with everybody just looking at me with their jaws on the floor. Mm -hmm. And my mother just looked at me and she said, oh, you got the gift. That was it. Not another word was spoken. No explanations, no nothing. It was just, and because she said it in such a matter of fact way, I just accepted it as, okay, that's normal. It's normal. Everybody has it, right? Yeah. No, everybody, everybody does. does. Everybody no big deal. Does. And when I was 12, I discovered that I could lay in bed and I could float up to the ceiling and watch myself mm -hmm. in the bed. Actual protection. And, yeah. I, I never left the room because I was terrified that if I left the room, I would get lost. And then what would happen to my body? You know, it just, mm -hmm. that's what the 12 year old brain will come up with. So I would just hang out on the ceiling and watch myself sleep. I, it was cool. Um, but then I kind of lost that ability when puberty hit. Um, and then for a long time, I just kind of shoved it in the closet, and pretended it didn't exist, you know, acted like I didn't hear things or see things or know things you know, every now and again, something would slip out and I would say something or, and people would just look at me kind of funny and go, well, how'd you know that? I, I, just a wild guess. You know, that was my answer. Yeah. Um, my late husband, uh, bless his soul, would just, he would look at me and say, there's no such thing. And I'd be like, yeah, baby, there is. <laughs> Ghosts exist. They're real. No, there's no such thing. I'm like, yeah, there is. How can you say that? I said, because I lived in a haunted house and I saw them. <laughs> That's how I can say that. Right. Believe what you want, but I know what I know, what I know. End of story. And um, then decades go by. And after he passed, I moved to Arizona just to go somewhere where I could figure out who I was. Mm -hmm. Basically, as I told people, I went from being someone's daughter to someone's wife, to someone's mother. And I didn't know who I was or what I wanted. It's, mm -hmm. My whole life had always been planned around somebody else's happiness. And so I was like, what, what, what does Sherry want? What do I want to do? And I had an acquaintance that lived in Arizona and was like, oh, why don't you come out of here and, you know, and see if you like it and get a fresh start. And so I did. Didn't know a soul, didn't have a penny to my name. Didn't have a car, nothing. I mean, I just hopped a train. I got on a train and went to Arizona and I stayed there for 10 years. Wow. And while I was out there, <laughs> that's when all the ghost hunting shows and stuff came out. Right. You know, they yeah. were real popular. And I've always been intrigued with the paranormal. So um, I was hooked. I mean, I watched all of them. Uh, it was when internet radio first started happening. And there was a channel called um, Para X Radio. Mm -hmm. And they would have different shows. Some shows talked about ghosts. Others would talk about psychics. One would talk about Bigfoot. You know, just whatever, all kinds of topics. And I started listening. And as I listened and absorbed what I was hearing, little things started happening again. You know, when I would try to pretend like it wasn't happening, but it would keep happening. And then um, my mother came out to live with me for a while. And uh, we used to go buy our cigarettes on the reservation because they were cheaper. And so we got to be friends with the guys that ran the store right by our house because I live like on the other side of the highway from the reservation. And um, I went in one day to go get cigarettes and. He was like, oh, hey, I was hoping you would come in. We've got a new calendar that we're giving out to our, our good customers. In, uh, and I was like, oh, cool. How much? He says, no, no, it's free for our, for our, our special people. And I was like, oh, okay, great. And so he gives me this calendar and he says, all the artwork is from local native artists in, in the calendar. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. I was really sold in. 
Well, I took the calendar. I went home and I started flipping through it. And one picture literally like grabbed me by the throat. And I heard very distinctly in my head, we're your guides. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what I was supposed to do with that. I just, and it's framed. It's sitting right here up on my wall. Um, I just knew that the picture was important and what it said to me was important. Just, mm -hmm. I just didn't know how to process it. And my mother knew how important the picture was to me. And she snuck it out of the house when I wasn't aware. And she took it to work with her. She worked at Joanne's. And she had it matted and framed in this huge frame. And um, and then gave it to me, I think it was Mother's Day or my birthday or something, hmm. and presented it to me. And that that picture goes everywhere I go. And like I said, it's the first thing I see when I get up in the morning. It's the last thing I see when I go to bed at night is that picture. Wonderful. And um, I didn't think about it. I don't know if I can pull it up or not. I used to have it saved, but I started clearing out all my... Uh, all my goodies because uh, I was running out of storage. And I didn't want to buy any, so <laughs> you know. I have so many external hard drives. It's not even funny. Yeah, um, I know there's a way to save it. I just gotta. Ah, ha, ha, there it is. And let's see. I might be able to share it here. Uh, let me share screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, That's it. Beautiful. That's it. It's absolutely and, beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? It's like a dream. It's like you're looking into a dream. You know, with the way the the like like the wind and everything is blowing them away almost. And um there was a lot of care taking into mounting that too. Yeah. She had it. She she worked in the framing department at um, at Joanne's, and uh, and that's what um, she took it to work with her. Like I said, and um, uh, had it matted and framed, and put uh, museum glass on it, so that it's got like the really right. like what they use in a museum for the. Where the glass on the front, she got the museum yeah. glass. Living yeah. in LA, uh, <laughs> I, when I, you're I, looking at the picture up close, you can actually see the little hole where the calendar pin would go. Wow, with with a spiral was. Yep. Um, I used to know an art dealer, and and he he insisted everything get covered with plexiglass, you know, a certain kind of plexiglass here in LA, because. Some falls, it's gonna it's gonna shatter. Yeah. So, but no, it, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful story and it's a beautiful beautiful painting picture. And um, Thanks for sharing that, really. And that's been about it. And then she got real sick. She had moved back to Louisiana, and then she got real sick. She had dementia, and um, it got to where my brother literally called me one day and said, "I can't deal with this. You have to come home." And mm -hmm. so I left my job and I moved back home and we spent her last 10 years between him and myself and my son taking care of her mm -hmm. until she passed. And then she died just before COVID hit mm -hmm. and COVID hit. We got locked down. I was stuck at home, not in a good place at all. And um, got on YouTube one day just to see what was going on and, Voila, there was this reader doing political tarot that I didn't know existed. I was hooked. I spent the first six months just watching. I never chatted, never said a word. And then when I finally spoke up, everybody's response was, well, we've been waiting for you to say something. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know you knew I was even here. And uh, and the rest, as they say, is madness. So... <laughs> I got That's invited wonderful. on the show to come and just see if I liked it and the bug bit. And it was like, yeah, I can do this. It just felt right. It was like, for the first time in my life, it was like a neon light going, this is what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. We've been waiting for you to wake up, get your act together. So here I is and I'm 
muddling right along. So, well, basically, I became a professional quote unquote psychic in um, 2001. Mm. So, and um, way before that, I I've, I've mentioned this before that I was working as a reporter and. I got a call one day that from a friend of mine in Washington, D.C., that Gene Dixon wanted to meet with me. So I went <laughs> and spent two days with her and learned everything there was to learn in those two days. But she said, you're not ready yet. And when the time is right, you will know. You'll be giving friends readings and stuff, but you're not ready. And so I was working for a TV show. It show went on hiatus. No, sequences. My dad died. Show hiatus. Nine eleven. Oh wow! And I, no, they put the show on hold. Everything was crazy. Nobody could work. And um, November, I have a car payment. I've got rent to pay. And a friend said, "Then start giving you readings." And then I realized. Remember what Jean said: "Is you will know when it's time." Yeah. And so that's when I started giving the personal readings and stuff. And I've been doing that for many years. But it wasn't until about two, three years ago that I was on YouTube and a friend of mine kept on talking about Linda. Mm. And so then I went there and all of a sudden, oh my God, and I was hooked. And so then one thing leads to another. And then I had talked with Mel and he suggested, why don't you do a YouTube channel? And my, my patent response, I tell everybody was, I told Mel, you and crack. And so then. I think that was his response to Linda when she told him that yeah. he needed to do the show. And so then I did, so then 14, 15 um, guided meditations later, here I am. But I love guided the meditations are great, guys. I've done a couple of them. With some clients, you can't go into the political stuff. They don't want to know. They just want to know when the boyfriend's going to call or, or what's yeah. going on in divorce. Or, you know, he's, there's hidden money. And uh, so, um, so it was refreshing hearing about politics and, and, and stuff like that. But, I mean, living in Los Angeles, though, you'd think it would be easy. Um, there'd be a psychic on every street corner. But there aren't. And uh, these reputable ones. But what I always love is the skeptics. I always love skeptics. Yeah. Because I never try and, it's like telling a, a, a Trump person, he's an idiot. They're not going to yeah. listen. I was at this party one time and this very well known doctor comes walking up to me and says, I hear you're a psychic. I said, Well, that's good. And then I said, Well, sorry, I'm not here to tell you. Yes or no? I said, usually I tell people, if you tell people you're a psychic, they say, well, you know, prove it. So I just tell people I talk to angels and they walk away real fast. So, so basically I just said, okay, you're skeptical. I'm not going to try and win you over, but does your girl, does your wife know about your girlfriend over in the Bahamas? <laughs> and I mentioned the island or whatever. And he was like staring at me and his wife had was actually had had several readings with me over the years. And so she walked up and said, oh, so what are you talking about? And he's looking at me and I just said that we were talking about that tie he's wearing that you picked it out for him today because that was your game two years ago for his birthday. <laughs> and oh, that's so nice. And, and then she walked away and he's like looking at me. I said, I'm not saying anything. It's not, your, not my place. Yeah. I just said, like you said, there's no such thing as psychics. There's no such thing. I and people say, Where do I get my information from? It's like, you know, it comes to me, you know. I it, sometimes I'll hear <laughs> things, I'll see things like in my third eye, but the wackiest thing they do sometimes is play music. And like, I had this one client, she's like, Are me and my husband going to make it? And all of a sudden, the jingle, the old jingle from the band end, I'm stuck on you, starts playing. Yeah. Like yeah, you're going to make it. You're stuck on each other and stuff like that. So it, 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 you know. That's great. See, I get no. I get a lot of stuff. I get in movie clips. Yeah. You know, I'll see suddenly there's, you know, a clip of 
something that happened on the Avengers or something that happened on Titanic or something, you know, just whatever movie that I've seen at some point. Mm -hmm. And suddenly that there's a scene that pops into my head that fits perfectly with what I'm trying to get across to someone. And they're like, well, oh, hopefully, exactly. hopefully this show is not like stacking deck chairs on the Titanic. I hope we do, we do a good job. But um, no, I really appreciate you asking me to be a guest. I really appreciate it. Thank oh, you. So well, much. And I'm hoping you'll come back lots of more times because I enjoy well, your company. <laughs> a friend of mine always says he's invited. He he's invited to go to places twice. The first time he shows up, the second time he has to go back and apologize. So, <laughs> so I hope that's not what happens here. So well, then after the second time you come back and we do an actual live stream, then I'll go on your channel. Yes, and we'll do a live stream on your channel yes. or recording or whatever you want. So, well, it's only, I'm, <laughs> I'm singing, you know, Madonna's like a virgin. I don't know. So we did it. I I did set, get some questions um, yes. regarding I our session you. today. And what you, would you like to go first? Um, I'll ask. Uh, well, let's see. The first question I think was the one that you had. And then um, I had one that was asking if we see our military officers getting their rise in rank and pay that's currently being held up by Senator Tuberville, or Representative Tuberville. I don't even know what rank he is, but he's holding up. Um, Wait, he's the one that he's the one that. He's having a history. The, there's no commandant for the uh, for the armed forces I and mean, the, um, the the Marine Corps, and it's holding everybody up and their pay and everything else. I do feel, and I said this before, I, I do feel there's going to be a shift on that. They can't hold it hostage. They can try, yeah. but it's going to get to a point where I just feel the Democrats are going to get together and either censure him or something because it's it's just it, it no, there's got to be a way to get around that yeah there, you know, there will be legally even if i feel it you know entertainment purposes only even if biden somehow gets some type of um, executive order through or something you know because he's done a lot yeah because these aren't the young kids that are sitting around playing no. on a computer all day most no, of these guys that are up for this are 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 uh, uh, career lifelong career, career, people career. career people who have busted their asses doing what they do, protecting our country, and and exactly you know, you know, with no questions they, asked. They deserve to have you know their rank and their pay and all that as it you know they work hard for that. So, mm -hmm. um, and speaking of military, I did get one question here. Um, from LH. Hi, Arthur and Sherry. What do you get regarding the U.S. soldier who ran across the border into North Korea? Why did he do it, and what will be the outcome for him? Like we were talking about earlier, the first thing I got in my head was radicalized. He'd been, he, you know, he, he's, he's been brainwashed. Um, and then I saw the there was some psychiatrist, psychologist or something on one of the TV shows talking about it. And they used the same terminology. And I was like, oh, OK, I guess yeah, I'm, I'm not very I, far off the mark on that one. But um, I heard the word radicalized, too. But I mean, the guy was there's there is a backstory that he was having trouble in Seoul, that he um, had an altercation with police where he's like kicking in a uh when they arrested him the, and kicking and screaming and also he had punched somebody in a club or something so, it's, 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 you know i'm going to say alleged because i don't know the details but they were getting him to go back to the united states they got somebody to take him to the airport he was he was through everything, and then next thing you know, he gets involved with this UN um, tour, and he's and people that were there were saying he was going ha ha ha, and ran over. So I, when I meditated on it, I feel 
there's something emotional disturbance here and also which could be a brainwash like as you're saying but i don't feel he's getting returned right away yeah i mean he's, he's going to become a pawn i pulled a oracle card on it mm -hmm. what you got and i got the grumpy red fairy and what it means I was looking it up while you were talking is that um, it's all about trying to fit in or feeling like you're not fitting in that right. you're not that you're not want to be special. Yeah. You know, I, maybe he believes that. Well, we can't say anything because I, you know, like he may, people have their beliefs and sometimes it depends what they are, where they're coming from. Yeah. And I just, you know, all I do is send them love and light. That's all you can do. That's all you can do, really. I mean, because I'm part of me as the, my late husband was a vet. My brother was a vet. My son's a vet. You know, um, part of me is like, I, I can't imagine what would, what kind of treatment this person's going to get. Uh -huh. It's like the last young man that supposedly went over on accident or something and got held for, what was it, almost a year before they released him and he was in a coma when they sent him back. I mean, he was... Yeah. He, well, and he died. And he died, yeah. So, I mean... I mean, I'm getting shades of... You know, I hate to say this, but when I first heard the story, I kept on, like you, I get little images of movies, and I kept on getting, like, the opening of the uh, Manchurian Candidate, mm. where they're in, the, where, you know, they're in all these ladies in a flower shop, or talking about flowers, and it's actually military being hypnotized. I, but I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. So I, mean, I guess we'll find out eventually what's and I know some people are gonna ask what heck are you using? It's the Oracle of Shadows and Light. Oh and mm -hmm. it's kind of more of a Halloween type deck, but I have found that I use this more when I do political readings okay. than anything else that tends to just fit. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I'm not always using cards. You can uh, sometimes, sometimes they help me with dates, so I will admit. I use, yes. when I, if I do use cards, I use the Lenormand deck, but the old one, not the yeah. newer ones. I'm, I'm well, I got, about. I just, I don't have any Lenormand deck. I just got this one. Okay. Um, the Kipper, yeah. the Kipper deck, which is, isn't that basically like the same thing? Well, or close okay. enough. This is this <laughs> like this is the fish. Okay. Yeah, this is, yeah. I got this one. I think on Etsy they were having a sale, mm -hmm. and um, and I thought I want to learn how to do that because I know there are other readers that do that kind of thing. So well, also it's it's <laughs> it's a small deck I can put mm. in my pocket. It travels very well. Also, um, years ago, now some of the decks have little sayings. Yeah. But that was uh, this is but this is not from Leonard Mon. This is from a guy named Stuart Kaplan when he was the publisher of the of the deck. Yeah, you that's like him? my tarot cards. Mm -hmm. I found a deck that has everything mm -hmm. on it. The meanings, but, everything. And it's yeah. really cool. So I would use these for client with a client sometimes when I see them in person. And one time the client says, That's not what the card says. Like, what do you mean? She's she's reading it upside down, you know. I'm like Oh, that's so. If you notice, this is this deck is in German, and, <laughs> and I have another one. I for the longest time I was using the deck in French because Madame Lenormand was the reader for Napoleon and actually for Josephine. Yeah, and Napoleon told him not to go to Waterloo and see what happens when you don't listen to your psychic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also, I I mean, disappear. some people, some people say there's no yes or no questions with. Yeah, or yes or no, but I say there is. 
I also That's read, why I like this tarot also deck. Things it has yes or no. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it has yes, no, or maybe um, on it. Like that one's a no card. Gives you a meaning. It gives you the rune symbol. It gives you the um, element. It gives you mm -hmm. um, definition. Astrological sign. Uh, okay. Gives you the numerological numer the You're numerology right. breakdown. Thank you. Of uh, I can't ever get that word out of whatever number that card is. Yeah. And so you can kind of use it for. for well, all kind of me, stuff. So for some reason, I just went to a duck with water with these and you know yeah you find what you like what resonates you find what works for you and for a while there they weren't making them so i was buying as many as i could find on youtube i mean on on, on ebay and then um then they started publishing them again but there's so many different variations of the deck yeah. and i mean i have most in here but i just go back to, to the one i'm used to it's like right I'm used to it well and so, there's some people i know they look at the cards and they know what they all are. They know what they all mean. They can lay them out. They can put a story together. I'm not that advanced yet. I still have to stop and look it up sometimes. It's like Mel is brilliant. And I have my little handy dandy cheat chart that I use. Um, but um, the biggest thing I've been learning to do is just go with my gut. Yeah, that's, that's what me. intuitively. What does it say? Because sometimes what it what it feels like is not what the meaning is. So. There's so many yeah. different interpretations of one thing. And right. Like I was yeah. teasing, just said, Mel is really, he's brilliant when it comes to playing cards. Yeah. Just, whoa, he knows them fast. Uh, there's another lady online that uh, Marie, uh, Marie's Table is her channel. Mm -hmm. She reads with playing cards. Mm -hmm. That's all she's ever read with. That's how she learned. And um, so, and I know there's another uh, reader that I read with, um, Marina from Heart Center Tarot. She originally started out reading with playing cards, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I'm 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 like hooked on buying cards. I've got far more cards than I'll ever use in my lifetime. But have, most of the oracles, I just something with the oracles, just yeah. like the light bulb went off. And so those are the ones I use mostly. But I have a few whatever, whatever works. I mean, as long as you right. get, some, yeah. you get the information, no matter where it comes from. And yeah, because sometimes I'm I'm shuffle a deck and I lay it out and I and or you know I'm getting ready to start pulling cards out of it and I very clearly will hear wrong deck. <laughs> it's like oh okay, gotcha. put that one down. Let me tell me which one, and they usually will tell me which deck for me to pull. And I'll come over here and I'll shuffle that one and I'll do it. So you know it's um. What's it's just like I said, it, yeah. what's, what speaks to you? We all do it. I do. I have pendulums that I use. Yeah, I actually have a set of um dowsing rods. Oh, yeah, I haven't figured out how to really work them yet, but you um, will. Yeah, it just takes time. Um, and I have basically the only time I really have to work on a lot of this stuff is weekends because I work during the week, you know. so I work 10 hours a day, and by the time I get home, I'm usually yeah. pretty pooped. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you want to get to, to some more political stuff? Yes, let's do some more. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, this is another one along the military issue that someone had brought up. was, um, uh, according to a journalist, her name's Alex Jacobson. I don't know who she is. I don't think I know who she is uh, talking about. She did this big article on the nation's um, our security clearance tracking system. And evidently it's in very serious trouble. Simply according to her article, according to um, there are so many right wing extremists that have been filtered into these systems now that things aren't being done the way that they're supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. And that's been one of Biden's biggest burdens is trying to clean house and get rid of these people. And, um, 
And so, you know, that that was their question basically was, will we, the way the, the author of the article put it was, we're only as strong as our weakest link, which, yeah, everybody right. knows that. Um, so the question was, will we be able to shore up these weak links to bring our security back to what it should be for, you know, for our country? Because I know when the last gentleman that sat in the Oval Office was there, we suddenly started having double agents, you know, and whatnot, and people that were on deep undercover were suddenly getting discovered and being jumping out of windows and whatnot, you know, so that's like well, it's kind of like in Dune with the Atreides come in and the Harkonnens have all the spies all over them. But um, I, I do feel that what I get here is there will be, it will be straightened out. The security clearances will be straightened out. It's going to take about three years, if not more, but yeah. little by little. And, you know, when you have a president who is giving his son-in-law clearance when he's not supposed to have it and his daughter... Yeah. Um, it's gets scary. Yeah. Very much so. Very but much so. Um, I had a question here while we're talking about the Orange Menace or Trumpy Dumpty, as I call him. Or uh, Duck LaRange, as uh, Hogarth likes to call him. Yeah. <laughs> this is from Ava Martin. Hi, guys. Good to see you. I'm curious to know what you and your guides see as Trump's demise. Do you see him fleeing to Saudi Arabia and dying there? Is it is it to be a military psych ward, rubber room, strike or heart attack, stroke or heart attack, or home confinement with zero outside communication? Thanks. The one thing that I have always seen on that is I, as much as I really want to see him behind bars. I don't see him behind bars simply because what, what the logistics of that and how we would make that work because he's still going to have secret service agents from what I understand. Now it seems to me that if he gets convicted of all these charges, he doesn't deserve to have secret service, but no. he knows things and that can be, very detrimental to the company, to the company, to the country as a whole. Um, I've always seen him being confined at home with everything taken away. No, no Twitter, no social media, no ability to sprout, spout off his, his, diarrhea of words that he throws out there that um well if that were to happen i wonder if like jared and ivanka would figure out a way to like grift everyone hey come see my father <laughs> give us a million dollars and sneak him in there for energy snippy jr would do that yeah. yeah he would be the one that would I'm, sell i too have, i too have, i don't see him going to jail. And I said before, I feel the make a deal he can't refuse. And similar to what, but of Spiro Agnew, when he was, had what, 67 indictments against him and they gave him, and they thought he was gonna be the next president because because Nixon was going down. So they just said, look, either we indict you and you will go to jail or you stop, you don't run yeah. and go away. But with Trump, I feel it's going to be more drastic than that. And I do feel social media will be taken away from him, and that will be his hell. That will yeah. be his hell on earth. But yeah, also, he can't shut up. He can't. I had said on, on a show that, well, you got to be alive to be the president. And I always felt his health is really bad. Really bad, yeah. And then as everything gets piled up and piled up and piled up, and the more pressure, I mean, that wig's going to explode. But I've had a few visions 
over the past, I guess, couple of years, whenever I've, I've read on this, I've had things come to me where it just, um, it's like he's still here, but he's not here. You know, it's like something clicks off permanently in the brain and just... Like the body's here, but the brain is gone. You know, the mind is. Well, is if that would have happened, at least it would prove he has a brain. I'm telling you, you know, but I don't wish any will bad will to most people. But you know, it is it, it's in God's hands. We're here, we're all in this for a reason. We're trying to learn a lesson from it all. I do feel always that light conquers darkness. Yes. And that sometimes what's the expression? That a candle is brighter than the sun in a dark room. Yeah. And you know, it's always so, darkness before the dawn. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, the other thing is with the new, there's the two new indictments coming down between Fonnie Willis and Jack Smith. I originally, I thought they weren't communicating that much. Yeah, I know. But I, I started meditating on it a lot. There's some type of coordination. There's something going on because he's going after all the attorney general. I mean, the, all the fake electors in all the in all the different states, yeah. except maybe Georgia, and that's because that's where Fonnie Willis is, and she's doing that. And also, with the way Georgia is, she can go to other states, you know, to bring things in on the RICO. Well, so, I think that's why they're not freaking out that bad over this judge down in Florida. Right. Because it's like, okay, you wanna you wanna postpone his trial. Well, we well, can do that because we got stuff over here. Well DC that's why I think Jack, that's why I think Jack Smith was brilliant yeah. in sending that letter to Trump. He's so many steps ahead of everybody so that he's reminding the judge, look, okay, you got this because I've got bigger judges. Bigger fish to fry in DC. So you know, you can do what you want. But also with the Fannie Willis, I just feel they have the same witnesses. Like she saw, let's see, what was it? Kemp, Rathenberger, Giuliani, uh, the eight electors that she gave um, <coughs> immunity to. And on the schedule for Jack Smith is Kemp, Ratzenberger, Giuliani, which we know he talked to them twice. But it's like, but they haven't really had the interviews yet. But it's almost like, He's waiting. You know, I really feel, and also she had nine months, a nine nine months head start, you know, before yeah. you came aboard. So I do feel that there may be some type of data sharing, but not illicit, not illegal, not anything crazy, no deep state. No, just, just the way that most prosecutors would. Yeah, but they want to coordinate. Share information and, and not yeah. mess up the other one's case. Coordinate and cooperate. That kind of thing, but um, and now Trump is not, you know he he tried to sue everybody and get them all thrown off the courts and get them you know everybody's and so far it's what nine to zero. Yeah, it's he, well he's pulled out all the old steps that he's always used in the past and always somehow some way managed to just skim right through it and I think the. The, when I go into his energy, the biggest feeling I get is pure, raw panic. Because for the first time in his life, there's a part of him up here that realizes none of this stuff is going to work on me. You can I'm, in deep, grift I'm in deep doo-doo and, you know, and it's all getting ready to hit the fan and there's nothing I can do about it, I think. And guess what? Even if you turn the fan off, it's still hitting it. <laughs> so it's ugly. Yeah. But the other thing I was getting, I've always been talking about Clarence Thomas, entertainment purposes only people. And I've always felt Jenny, his wife, is going to be the biggest thorn in his side. She's going to bring him down. Oh, yeah. And basically when they had the um, 16 fake electors indicted in, um, in Michigan, Two of them go back to Jenny Thomas. They're connected. Yep. 
And she's in, in Arizona. She what sent like 29 electors Something threatening like emails and stuff like that. Day six, she paid for more than half of the buses that carted those right. people over there and back again. Um, she footed the bill for a lot of that. I mean, well, she didn't put the know. bill personally, but she maneuvered the money. Well, yeah, she yeah. she's the one that arranged it, took care of it, got the money I, where it needed to be. Um, but I feel she's in she's in hot water because her role in all of this was influencing and um, you know trying to push people into you know it's, it's a, the election was stolen and this and that and that big line. So, and telling people, stay strong, stay strong. But that's where I feel the attorney generals are going to be able to get stuff on her individually. And then I feel our Jack will be able to do that as well. You know, it's just. Yeah, a personal question for me is what about, and I've, I've not been able to do really get a read on it. And I don't know if it was just because I'm kind of close to it that I'm just not being shown. But um, it's like for those AGs that bought into what Trump was, the big lie and the big steal and all that, and put their names to documents to, to do this, that, and the other. Um, you know, my question is what's going to happen to these guys? Because, well, you know, well, when, when are they going to start being held accountable? Because I know where I am, our front runner for the governor's position is our AG, who was one of those that put his name to the documents to. Well, to there's, there's, there's interference. There's definitely interference. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to stop an official, you know, whatever the wording is. I'm not a lawyer. Um, yeah. Never pretend to be, but whatever the wording is, where you try and stop something from happening, you know, a, a, like the, the uh, certification, trying to stop that certification, and that's what that's what I, I feel that that's one of the things they can go after all these fake electors with is that's that's a crime, oh, yeah. and also fraud, also just a lot. I I just feel a lot of things are going to happen to them. Unless yes. they all get immunity and turn state evidence. But yeah. like I said, 16 got in, indicted in Michigan alone. So, yeah. it, and these were not like, not like little, these were like head of Republican committees and stuff like that. In, yeah, in the these, these aren't the peons at the bottom of the totem pole. These are the, the, the big guys. At the top. These aren't the yeah. people, you know, making, you know, photocopies <laughs> or big guys. But the other thing I kept on getting was entertainment purposes only, my little cloven hooves. <laughs> why it, that's why it runs across the banner at the bottom. <laughs> Margie Taylor Green. Oh. She just got herself in some deep doo doo. Oh, big time. Big time. In so because, many different directions, she's not going to know later. Well, first of all, what she did. By, and everybody should know by now that she actually was holding up pictures taken supposedly from Hunter Biden's laptop of Hunter Biden engaged in a sexual act with, they say, a prostitute or that he was actually making porn and also himself being naked. They, you know, made sure that everybody else's face was, you know, taken out or whatever, blurred, but not his. So basically... The statutes, the laws in the books, there's a federal, is revenge porn. In D.C., yeah. revenge porn. And also, in what she did was, she then sent out a newsletter to all her people, but it wasn't age-restricted. Yeah. Um, not, no safe, you know, not safe for work. And um, she had the same pictures on the yeah. newsletter. And, and that's, so that's inter, that's interstate. I mean, that's that's shipping stuff over the state line, you know. And, that, and the thing is thing that the woman that was in these supposed pictures with him, evidently, no one ever got permission from her. No one got permission from anybody. Number one, yeah. number two, they just took the pictures and used them. 
And number three. And to, to, um, to get it all off, no one's ever had a laptop that was his. No. There was a hard drive that they said came from a laptop. Well, it's, it's been through so many hands, it's it's yeah. not even funny, you know. But he's also so, said, look, I was on drugs. I I mean, he's done his mea culpas as you can only apologize for something once. You can't keep on apologizing for it. Right. And he has apologized. Number one. Number two. He's a private citizen. Exactly. And he's not a government his official. His lawyer has already sent the ethics, the House Ethics Committee, a scathing two page letter that's, you know, they yeah. have to do something with Marjorie Taylor Greene. I've already signed a petition on it. I think Moo One or one of them already has a petition going out about to yeah. get people to, you know, to insist. I don't know who these people are anymore. I mean, are they animal, mineral, or vegetable? You know, or human. You know, it's uh, a friend said they should have like somebody test all of them, like in Dune with a Gaj Dabar. You know, through the and if they move, they're an animal. You kill them. But, I mean, it's just gotten worse and worse. And the fact that they've run Democrats out for stuff that is so much less than what it is today. Yeah, I mean, they, they got Al Franklin Franken exactly. booted Franklin. from the Senate yeah. from an old picture on a comedy tour before he was ever even a senator where he made a lewd movement, but he was Put his hand that, you know, 15 feet away from the woman. It wasn't like he was touching her. It was just the position of his yeah. hands lined up with the camera. And it was like, really? I mean, when they first came out with that, I was I remember looking at it and saying, but he's not even touching. I mean, so we've all done stupid crap like that. Oh my that God. was back when he was a comedian. He wasn't even in government service. I do tell people, though, I'm glad <laughs> At my age, we did not have social media when I was growing up because I would be learning the Quran by now. Oh, it, yeah. I, I put away. They'd have done locked me up and thrown away the key a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stuff. Oh. Thank but, you God know, there was no such thing as social media when I was a kid. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, you know, those are different days. But when you have. Yeah. You know, oh. but, the, but the revenge porn. She really stepped over her bounds on that one. That is going to get her in real. Well, and that's the other thing that I get whenever I go into her energy is that she feels so self-righteous in what she's doing and that she can do no wrong and that every step that she's taking is, is perfectly okay because she's got the righteousness of God on her shoulder or whatever you know and it's like do you remember when she asked she's Congress not all, to be decorum that there should be decorum on the floor and everybody laughed yeah at everybody her. laughed at her because of her the way she I mean, that was like a saturday night live skit right there yeah um uh yeah, it's it's both oars aren't in action with that boat. <laughs> Let's put it that way, you know. Or I, as so, I would say, the oars are in the water, but the lights aren't on. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's they're just in the water, but they're not attached to the boat or to anybody in the boat. They're just floating in the water. Well, but, I don't know. I just wish Meg too would get them if it's a boat. Anyway, so I had one more question uh, that was a little off from the most of what we've been talking about. And that's with the um, the DOJ mm -hmm. has just filed a lawsuit against Abbott and the state of Texas. Yes, yes. The regular wire buoys that they've got in the Rio Grande that are already there. It's, it's always like razor wires strapped between buoys running through the It's inhuman. River. It's what yeah. one person wrote and they said to shut up. And um, they, they will, the DOJ is going to win. I don't care what Abbott says. Oh, um, yeah. You know, he can call in, he can threaten to call in the uh, National Guard for his state, but I don't feel it's going to get that 
bad, but they're just cruel individuals. And they, the cruel they keeps the point. Yeah, you know, I wonder if he used to like pull the wings off of flies. You know, yeah. Same thing with um, Ron. Don't say gay to Satan. Um, he's just a cruel cool individual. The yeah. energy around both of them is just cruel. Well, with DeSantis and all the mess he's doing with history and the school books, everything. Oh, I had nothing to do he with. He was it. a history major from from Harvard. He graduated from Harvard in history. But and yet, they asked him about it, and he said, "Why well, nothing to do with it? You should ask them. They were scholars." Yeah. Right. <laughs> You know, and so he's not taking responsibility for anything. So is that somebody? That's the other thing. None of them take responsibility for their actions, even when they get caught, caught, you know, right. hands in the cookie jar. Oh, you know, my hands in the cookie jar. Well, I was getting cookie for you. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stealing cookie. I'm getting cookie for you. Yeah. Because yeah. I know you would want one. Yes. And um, there's one other article, and I just happened to catch part of it just before we got on here. Um, it seems like last week, Texas and Florida, again, our two favorite states here, um, discovered human remains in suitcases that were left in public areas. And that's all the article says. It doesn't say what kind of human remains, if the human remains have been identified, if they know if it's male or female, or one suitcase was, it was actually a duffel bag, was found by farmers, a farmer and his family when they went out in the morning to go feed their animals. Mm -hmm. And there was a duffel bag like, sitting on the ground by their barn. And when they went to go see what it was and opened it, discovered body parts in it, you know, they immediately called the police. And mm -hmm. this was the first I've heard of it. And I caught I've like, never, I've not heard this yet. Yeah. And I just happened to catch like first a little, hint I'm getting like a blurb. is <laughs> both Florida and Texas, they're connected. It's one individual. They're connected. That's the first all thing I felt was immigrant. Getting rid of an immigrant. Or, you know, getting rid of... The trash, according to them. Yeah, yeah. Just taking out the trash. You know. Um, Poor souls. And I don't know if it's like just one body of parts or if there are multiple parts from multiple bodies i did the article didn't say um and uh i mean i'm gonna have to do more research on it because yeah. i'm intrigued now i'm, I'm intrigued but I've, i haven't heard this yet and, yeah uh, i hadn't either and this supposedly happened two weeks ago or last week wow. excuse me it's like this is the first i've heard of it i've not heard nothing about this and uh I know myself and a couple of other readers, we like to come on and do like cold cases. We'll do readings on cold cases that we find, um, which is a lot of fun just to try to see what you can maybe pull up. Mm -hmm. And that was the vibe I got from this that immediately was like, okay, something's not connecting yeah. all the synapses here. Yeah. So and and I don't who, knows, know who knows what they did release and what they didn't release. To the news, yeah, you know. exactly. So they may know a lot more. So it just surprised me. Uh, it hearing, came out. I've not heard a whisper of this. What I'm hearing is though, the perpetrator will be caught. Yeah, that's all it, that matters. It just came booming. The perpetrator will be caught. Yeah, and um, that's all I'm saying. I'm trying to say, what's the story to tell? What, what, you know, what? They're not, they're not saying anything. So yeah. we'll, we'll know. See, that was it. When I when I heard it, I I just I do blank. It was crickets. I was like, okay, guys, come on. <laughs> I'm going to be recording real soon here. You want to give me something? And <laughs> nothing. So yeah. Well, 
I don't know if it's just not time for us to know yet or, but I just thought it was something that just really, really caught my attention. It was like, okay, that, that's wild. Well, oftentimes wild. when I read for people and I'm not getting an answer, I'm not getting something for them. And I learned a long time ago, especially through Jean, that sometimes people will ask something. You won't be able to answer it because they're not meant to know. Yeah. And if they or do know, know, they'll go off and F everything up so it doesn't happen. <laughs> they think it's one thing and it's another. Yeah. So when sometimes I get silence, I'm just like, okay, well, we're not meant to know right now. Yeah. That's it. I mean, when I get crickets, it's like, okay, <laughs> whatever you don't say. No. Um, and and then it's like, I don't know if it's because it's something that I don't need to know. Is it something that that the person I'm reading for doesn't need to know? Or is it, it just it, that it doesn't matter the information we don't need to know at yet at that, that time. there's more evidence that needs to come out first mm -hmm. before they're going to give us something else? Mm -hmm. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to walk on you just then. No, that's that's okay. I I have diarrhea of the mouth. Sometimes I start talking and I can't shut up. And I hear myself and I think, "Shut up, Sherry," <laughs> and I keep talking. <laughs> I think we all do that. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, Arthur, it has been an hour. We've been at that plus the time we spent together before, so it's been a little bit longer than an hour. And I have thoroughly enjoyed myself. Thank you so, so much. I've never been to a swamp before, so thank you. Yeah, there you go. I literally physically live about three miles from the largest land-based swamp in the continental U.S., mm. and that's the Atchafalaya Basin. And uh, it's an 18-mile bridge to get across it. Oh. And um, the swamp My is beautiful is and deadly, just like the desert. Is beautiful I was say, and deadly. My claim to fame is I live about a mile away from the, the Brea Tar Pits. <laughs> There you go. I've never seen those, so <laughs> you don't have to see them. Would, smell. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that was like when I went to Seal Beach in San Diego. <laughs> My son took me to see to, to to see the seals, and I was like, "Oh wow!" Now I know why people prefer just watching Geographic Channel. <laughs> it's like these things stink really bad. <laughs> yeah. And they chase you if you don't. If you, you know, I yeah, I was just like, oh, that's crazy. Because um, we were up like on this this boardwalk up halfway up a cliff mm -hmm. thing. And they're all down below. But there were some of them that come run up to the edge and be barking at you. You know, like, yeah. come down here. Let's let's have it out. It's like, yeah. like dude, man, y'all stink. Wow. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm just happy because we were able to take my mom to go see that, and she'd never seen yeah. the Pacific Ocean or anything before. So we were excited that we were able to to take her to see all of that stuff. I remember yeah. the first time I saw the Pacific, because as a kid we used to go. To, I'm from Philly originally, so we would go to spend our summers in Ocean City, and it was always the ocean. But then when I came to Los Angeles for the first time on a visit, I'm like, that is blue. The Atlantic is green. This is blue. Yeah. Yeah. And the Gulf is turquoise. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up on the Gulf Coast. I've lived down here my whole life from Texas to Florida, up and down the coast. And uh, I love the beach. I could spend all day on the beach, every day on the beach. The most but, yeah, the Pacific is just... It's yeah. the bluest of blues. I mean, it's such a pretty color. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the most clearest magical experience in water I've ever had was in, um, I was in St. Martin's and there was nobody on the beach. And I dove into the ocean and I just heard music. Just tons and tons, because I'm also a composer, but I mean, that's how they talk to me. But I'm hearing just like a yeah. symphony. And it was just, and then like choir voices, like angels. It was just so beautiful. And I mean, I came out of the ocean just like stunned. And yeah. um, 
my friends. There's something like, about being in crystal clear water mm -hmm. that you can walk out to your chin and see your toes in the sand. Yeah, that's what this was. It was you know, just and it's that's pristine. what it's like in north northwest Florida, you know, when you um there along the panhandle there in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful you know, they call it the Emerald Coast because it's just this beautiful turquoise emerald green yeah. water. I mean I we we lived there from nineteen sixty nine to nineteen seventy five, seventy six, I think, and I lived on the beach. It's just I loved it. And yeah. and it just has the most beautiful water and white, white, white sand. I mean, I remember we first moved there, the thing that really tickled all of us is the sand is so clean that it squeaks when you walk on it. You know, it's as you're walking across the sand, it just yeah. um it was it was cool. I miss I miss that part of Florida, and it's like now I can't go there and enjoy myself because of all the crap that's going on in Florida. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll just go to Florida with it, you know, big gay pride flag. Yeah, hi, and you know, but whatever. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very you much. You have to come to my show. I have had a blast. So, um, I'm gonna download this, and we're gonna I want to put it up as a premiere for a little bit later. And thank you for everybody for watching. And yes. if I said anything ridiculous. I'm sorry. Hopefully you laughed as much as we did. <laughs> Look, I tease people. I, 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 made a lot. I made kid a lot. But no, when it comes to my predictions, I'm as serious as a heart attack. Yeah. So. I mean, say it with a smile, but I'm meaning what I'm saying. So. Yeah. You know, but I like to have fun with it. That's yeah. The so do I. You gotta keep, that's, you gotta that's keep people the laughing, people smiling. Please, you know, that's what it's supposed to be. Well, thank you again. You're more than welcome. Thank you for coming on. I can't wait for you to come back. And uh, we definitely have to. Yeah, do I'll come back to apologize. <laughs> and more readings, and then then I'll go over on your side. You got it. Oh, I see her. All right, yeah, my dear. Bye, everybody. Thank y'all.